Hey, it's Benji Cole, son of Al Cole from CBS Radio and host of People of Distinction. The talk that gives an in-depth view of some of the most dynamic, intelligent, and successful people on the planet. Run to our website, peopleofdistinction.org, for more info, or you can always email me directly at benji at alcoholenterprises.com. And we are very excited to showcase this next guest here on our network, so sit back, strap in, and get ready for a wonderful ride. And on the line with us today, we have Daniel Slot. We're going to be discussing his wonderful book, Awareness Journey, The Passage to Happiness. Available for purchase through Amazon as well as BarnesandNoble.com. And people, listen, Dan was brought to our network, People of Distinction, today by some of the best movers in the business, Diamond Media Press Publishing. So if you have a book that you'd like moved, give yourself the best gift you could possibly give and move it through Diamond Media. And you can find out more information on their fantastic company at DiamondMediaPressCO.com. And people... Listen, it is an absolute pleasure to have Dan here on the line. Now, the moment you go to his Amazon page, you go to his Barnes & Noble page, you start to do any research on his book, Awareness Journey, you instantly can understand what we're discussing today, or at least have a rough idea of the components that we're going to go over. Now, it's a fictional narrative, but it's steeped in reality, right? Like the, 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 the messages are steeped in reality. The underlying theme is something that is steeped in reality. And it's really creative in the way Dan comprised this because a lot of symbolic representations are going to be used within the book. And it's really all about how people limit themselves. Okay. And we limit ourselves to happiness. And it doesn't have to be that way, right? It is within our control. It just takes a shifting of perception and understanding when you're going through that journey. I absolutely love it. This, the book could not be more perfectly timed. A, having another book to add to the shelf is always a good thing. But B, guys, when we're talking about harnessing our own mentality, when we're talking about really creating the happiness within ourselves and within our communities and it it is within our power given the past two and a half years with this pandemic listen i know it's a varying degree because the 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 limits of adversity that we've all experienced have been on a varying degree on the on the spectrum level but one thing that is certain is there's been a lot of unhappiness in the air And this book is perfectly timed because it's going to allow you, it's going to train you and educate you on how to really be grounded in that and really how to establish that again. And Dan is the expert. He's written the book. He's going to be able to articulate everything much better than I ever could. So without further ado, let's jump right in and let's invite him here with us. Dan, first and foremost, welcome to People of Distinction and thank you very much for being a guest. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm fantastic, Dan. I'm listen. It, it, it's a pleasure having you on, and you know we get a lot of clients that that come to our desk, and we have to sift through and figure out which ones are going to be the most pertinent for our listening audience. And when your book came up, man, it was a no-brainer. We can easily see the benefits that you have incorporated into the book, and you've done it in a very creative way. So we're really looking forward to embarking upon this and and learning more about the words of wisdom that you've put in the page. But before we go into the book, Dan, let's hold off slightly. Start by telling our listening audience a little bit more about yourself and your background, please. Okay. I'm uh, I'm 65 years old. Mm-hmm. I've been married to Deborah, my wife, for 39 years. Wow. I have three great kids. Um, they're all adults now, and uh, they're living good lives. Mm-hmm. That's about it. <laughs> there you go short and sweet i love it you know well dad listen it sounds like you've surrounded yourself with a beautiful family congratulations on the 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 marriage that you've been able to i think you said it was 38 39 years i mean that's incredible man fantastic nothing but continued success to you and all of your loved ones dan without further ado let's jump right into the book okay awareness journey tell us a little bit more about your narrative yeah, the book is a, an allegory. It starts with a, a young man, um, actually a teenager, mm-hmm. who goes on a walk, and he goes uh, down to the harbor, 
and goes on a trip on a sailboat. And the stops that he makes, the ports that he visits, are in actuality, they're locations in your own mind and heart and soul. And mm -hmm. he gets to know himself as well as uh, the world around him. And things become clearer and clearer as he as he goes through his journey. Fantastic. Now, Dan, next question that I wanted to go into, I want to cover the title quickly. Now, listen, I think it's safe to assume after the, the description that you just gave, your title, Awareness Journey, is a very direct translation to what your character is going through. I mean, he, his journey is creating more awareness within himself. I, am I safe to assume that? Yeah, that's correct. That's mm. exactly what it is. So the representation, of course, for the title is hinting towards that. Let's talk about inspiration for a second, Dan. Really, when it comes to this book, at ground level, what inspired you to embark upon this journey for yourself? Um, it, well, it, it, that's probably kind of a long question, or the answer <laughs> to it is kind of long. I, I was raised in the inner city, and there was a, a lot of violence. Um, people lived in, in fear and in anger. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of sorrow. And that was the viewpoint that I had. And I, I used to say that people who see a wonderful world are blind. They don't know what reality is. Um, and it, to couple that, my upbringing religious-wise, my parents were fundal fundamentalist Christian. Mm -hmm. And I was taught that God is a loving, caring, patient compassionate father and at the same time he's a judging punishing vengeful judge and the it created a huge um amount of questions for me um i i look at people bill gates and mother Teresa, um adolf hitler and mahatma gami gambi and myself and I say, we were all born and live in the same world, yet our worlds are light years apart. Um, what makes some people change and decide certain things and make certain choices um, and others don't? Mm -hmm. And I, I lived with these questions and they, they ate at me and bothered me. And I, I ended up uh, financially doing fairly well. I live in a nice home and I have a nice car. And I, I started seeing the world a little bit differently. But the people still had the same thing, that the anger and the fear and the guilt and sorrow. Um, and and I, the questions just continued to haunt me. And I, I met a guy, his name was Bob Proctor. Uh, some of your audience may know of the name. Yeah, He's a, a trainer, an inspirational speaker. And although his message was primarily how to make money, he taught me to a, a different perspective and to look at things a little bit differently. And it didn't answer any questions, but it gave me a path to follow. Mm -hmm. And about that same time, I read a book by... The, the, uh, a, the author was Dr. David Hawkins. He's a, a medical doctor and a psychologist. And he spent his life researching uh, levels of consciousness. And it really began to answer a lot of the questions that I had. And I, I just kind of took those answers as they came to me and, and put them on paper. And that's kind of how the book happened there you go well dan listen you can't put an answer like that out and then have me not follow up on it i mean of course i have to go into detail now dan we need detail so uh, you're talking about how this all originated for you in these deep philosophical questions that you had pondered upon and that kind of manifested through research and culminating in this book 
So my follow-up question to you, Dan, is what were some of those answers that you came up with? And for anybody else, for any readers or our listening audience right now that find themselves hey, well, going through their own hey, journey. Oh, go ahead. Hey, the um, 78% of our population of the society lives in this negative territory. Mm -hmm. Dr. Hawkins says it's it's not truth it's falsehood right. um and that, that's where th those are the people that that you and i the majority of people deal with right. and we are primarily in that group that's four out of five of us uh, if you deal with 20 people during the day 16 people never get out of that negative territory um dr hawkins message i think is extremely important it's fascinating to me but his audience to me i i believe his audience are people who don't necessarily need that message mm -hmm. um the people that he talks to seem to be more enlightened and they're not the people that i deal with and i associate with do business with on a regular basis mm -hmm. um so i wanted to bring that message to normal people who who live normal lives like I do. You know, Dan, next question here for you, and, and it, it, it may be unfair to pose the question because I think that it's very broad and it varies based upon the individual, but please entertain me, entertain our listening audience today and try to answer it if you can. So for anybody that does find themselves going through these negative emotions, negative thoughts, just living and surrounding themselves in negativity, as you're articulating right now. What are some methods to get out of that? I think the main thing is um, people don't realize how negative uh, their lives are. Mm -hmm. They're not, I, most people, they don't say, oh, my life is terrible. Most people just live their life and they're okay. They're satisfied. Things are okay. They, they live in a nice house. They go to work. They have a job. It's not all that bad. Right. Um, but it, it, they don't recognize. Um, it, it, for me, it, it just it, when I met Bob Proctor, it, I, I knew forgiveness is much better than revenge. Mm. But I lived in the the revenge stage. That was what was right. If someone did something to me, what I had to do was get revenge. Um, revenge is painful for everybody, not just the person who receives it, Absolutely. but the person who gives it. It's painful. Forgiveness is much better. We all know that. We we're not. We don't have to be told that. But we don't. It, it, it's like we know it's true. We believe it but it's not who we are. Mm -hmm. And until we recognize that, we have to recognize those situations and say, oh, that's me, that's who I am. And I have to get out of this if I wanna be happy. And until we recognize it, we can't find a path out. It's, it's not possible to, find, to go somewhere if you don't know you're not, it's not possible. Yeah. That makes sense. It makes perfect sense, Dan. I mean, listen, this is this is profound. I talk to my listening audience often about perception, right, and the importance of positive uh, and positivity in that perception. And I am a, a very firm believer. Ask those around me. I believe in the totality of perception creating your reality. And I think it started off as a as as almost the you know, a defense mechanism. Because I was definitely one of those people growing up. I remember going through a tough time in my life and all I was able to see was the negativity around me. And it seemed like because that was all I was seeing, it just bred more negativity. I, I mean, not to say that there was more negative things happening, but what happened after that is I did the exact same thing in reverse, right? Where I was now starting to just intentionally focus on the positive things going on around me. 
and really speaking positivity into my life, right? So positive mantras, positive mentality in terms, like shifting my mentality from looking at things between wins and losses to now wins and lessons. So even in negative aspects, even in things that I didn't necessarily like that were happening, there's silver lining is there, right? There's education there that can lead to wisdom, right? If I choose to shift my perception and see it that way. And it's kind of like, you know, the easiest example that I can bring up that people can probably relate to. I remember when I was younger and I got my very first car. Prior to me getting that car, I never saw that car on the road, right? I would see all these other cars. I would see Nissans. I would see Mazdas. I would see everything else except the Ford that I had gotten at that time. And what happened that was really interesting is when I got that car, all of a sudden I was seeing that Ford model everywhere, right? And it wasn't that Ford all of a sudden started making more of these cars. It was solely the fact that this was now on the forefront of my mind. It was now something that I could perceive and I was seeing and I was aware of. And when that happened, now I was starting to spot them everywhere. And I think the the connection that I'm making here is the same thing works when it comes to positive thinking and positive thoughts. The more in the forefront of your mind that you can put them, the more, and again, it's absolutely a fake it till you make it type thing, right? We know we're oversimplifying here, folks. But it was something that when I started to focus on the positivity in my life and put that in the forefront, not that more positive things were happening, I was now more aware of the positivity around me. And it seems like that's kind of what you're going at in terms of the importance of your awareness here. Am I on the right track here, Dan? Exactly the right track. In Mm. fact, I was going to use an example very similar to that. It's (laughs) if you don't, see it you you can't find it Absolutely. um you can't it, when you see the negativity if you all you see is anger when somebody cuts you off in the on the highway your re- response is to give them the bird or to lay on the horn um it, it's it's a natural thing and it feeds on itself now mm-hmm. you're angry at a driver who you don't know it's no bearing on your life whatsoever but now you're in an upset state which we know is not going to right it's not going to put you in the best position to accomplish things and again we're getting back to a driver that you know nothing about you will never actually meet has no bearing on your life whatsoever but we allow them to take power and ownership over our our emotions this this is powerful stuff dan people again we're here on the line with daniel slot We're discussing his wonderful book, Awareness Journey, The Passage to Happiness, available for purchase through Amazon as well as barnesandnoble.com. Dan, next question that that I'd love to get into, and listen, I know where we've established this to, actually, you know what, let's hold off on that. I'll, I'll come back to that one after. Dan, what would you say was a highlight for you in writing the book, or if not a highlight, something that surprised you that you weren't anticipating before you began? Um, I, I don't think the book actually gave me a highlight. There's a few things in the book that uh, I, I think are, are very important that mm-hmm. will come to the reader. The, the first one, right at the beginning, when the, the, uh, the mentors asked uh, the main character, Tan, they asked him, you know, which boat is his and where he's been to in the world. And his response was, oh, I can't, I, I, that's not me. I, I'll never have those things in my life. And the answer they s- said to him was, don't ever limit yourself. And I didn't realize how important that okay. statement was until after the book was done. And I realized that that should stand out. Absolutely. Yeah, no, Dan, that that absolutely. I mean, that makes sense. And it, so often we forget, we pigeonhole ourselves, we put ourselves in boxes and we become complacent. And just as an artist, I mean, we say this all the time, complacency is the death of creativity. Uh, but complacency can be the death of growth as well. I mean, there's a lot of other things that it'll, being complacent will hold you back, right? And keep you stuck and confined in a situation that ultimately isn't going to be in your best interest, right? 
Now, right. Dan, ne- next question here, and this is the one that I wanted to get into before, and I know we've already gone over it, but I think your book is that profound where the message is worth being repeated. So Dan, multi-part question here. First and foremost, who would you say is your intended audience and what are you hoping to see them take from the book? Um, my intended audience is the people that uh, normally don't get that message, I, which mm-hmm. I think is most people. Yeah. I think um, it, most people live their lives and they think everything is okay. Uh, they're they're all right. They're they're satisfied. Um, they're happy at times. They have fun. They love their family. Um, they don't realize that they may be living in one of these negative uh, attractor fields or levels of consciousness and and still be looking at things through a uh, maybe an anger viewpoint or a, a pride viewpoint. Mm. Um, something that they don't recognize. And if they would recognize that, man, I'm angry a lot or I'm afraid a lot, especially I think... It, lately because it, it, everybody's worried about um a terrorist attack or covid yeah. or climate change or racism or all these things that the media keeps feeding us um if we're not afraid then there's something wrong with us we have to be afraid yeah. and we'll go from one thing to be afraid of to another thing to be afraid of and i think a lot of people are living in fear because the media keeps reminding us of all the things to be afraid of. Um, and we don't realize it. We don't realize that we're living in fear or we get angry because somebody tries to make us afraid or something like that. Um, I, I think it's real easy to fall into that and not recognize that you're falling into it. And when you get out of it, you start getting out of being afraid. Now you're not comfortable because you're used to being afraid or you're used to being angry. Um, Like I said, the example I said before, everybody knows forgiveness is better than revenge. But if you're an angry person, revenge is comfortable and forgiveness becomes a weakness. And you look at it in a a perspective that a person who is in that uh, higher attractor field would say, well, of course, I'm going to forgive someone. And someone who lives in anger says, I'm not comfortable with that person. I want to be angry and I want to be get revenge. Um, that's what's natural. It, that feels comfortable to us, even though it's painful and we don't like being angry. Well, you know, Dan, this is why your book is so important, right? Because it's going to help raise the awareness to things that go unnoticed. Right. And I I think I absolutely agree. I think a a lot of people are in this position and don't even recognize that they're there. So this book is profound because it's really going to help illuminate some of these dark patterns that we're not recognizing. Now, Dan, as we start to close out of this fantastic interview, man, what's next for you? What's on the horizon? Is is there another book uh, in the works that's set to come out shortly? Talk to us about what's upcoming. Actually, yeah i I wrote another book Mm -hmm. this book is um the main character meets these people in in these uh attractor fields and levels of consciousness and he gradually meets people as they they go higher and higher they go from the negativity the sorrow the anger the fear into pride and acceptance and willingness and courage and eventually into uh, love and joy. Um, But he doesn't experience those. He sees them. He meets those people. Uh, The next book I'm working at is people who are actually living in those attractor fields and levels of consciousness and how they uh, interact and um, get themselves and how people help each other get to the next level and find happiness. It's more of a, a personal journey as opposed to a, an observation journey. There you have it. Guys, art imitates life. 
okay? And it might not be a direct representation of your life, but I'm, I, listen, just hearing him talk, I could see myself in some of these characters, right? I've been in these positions. I know you have as well. We all have, right? Some of us may still be in those moments of anger and uncertainty. This is why this book is so important. I'm going to list it for you once more, even though I know I don't have to, but let's re-impress it once again. We're here on the line with Daniel Slott. We just finished discussing his amazing book, Awareness Journey. The Passage to Happiness, available for purchase through Amazon as well as barnesandnoble.com. People, it starts with the education. It starts with raising our awareness. This book is going to help you do that. And then once you have the information, then it's about implementing it into your day-to-day -day lives and how do you utilize the information that you were just given. But it's possible and we can grow and we can get better. It starts with the education. You have Dan to thank for that. And we also are going to thank him because, Dan, this was absolutely wonderful, man. Such an honor. Thank you once again for being a guest with us on People of Distinction. Thank you very much. Come and be a guest with us on People of Distinction.